Hello and welcome to the lesson where we're going to be walking through the last parts of design. We're going to be talking about indexes and sequences. So primarily, I want to start with sequences because I think sequences are a very valuable tool uh, that can be used as part of design. So as we design these tables, for example, uh, let's take a look here at this code. Um, and you'll see that I've, I've gone ahead and dropped everything from my database. I've gotten rid of um, everything in here that uh, I didn't want to use. Um, and I'm going to basically have no tables. Um, so as we start through this, um, I have some sequences that I actually did already create. I'm going to make sure they're not in there. All right, perfect. And um, so uh, what we're going to do is um, I'm going to skip these drops table t statements because they, uh, we don't need them. And I'm going to create this table called vendors. Now, what you'll see here is that the vendors table, uh, as I you know, create it, if I select star from vendors, and if you haven't gone through the select statement yet, that's OK. That's how we grab everything out of this uh, table. Um, you'll see here that um, there's no data in the table, but it, these are the columns that we have access to. Um, you know, the easier thing to probably be to actually go look at the table itself and look at the structure of the table. Now, as I insert records into this table, um, what could be a real pain is that if I had to, you know, you know, go and look at like what's the next invoice ID that I want to, you know, or vendor ID I want to use. So let's say I've inserted ten vendors in the vendor table, um, and I want to insert a new vendor. Do I have to go and grab the maxed value of the vendors, or how do I how do I know that the next one in the sequence is eleven? How do I know not to jump to twenty or something like that? That's where a sequence is really really helpful. Um, so imagine that you know we just make the database automatically assign the next vendor ID in a, in a sequence. Um, and so that's what the sequence is there to do. And the reason we talk about it as part of design is that you can actually set the sequence to be a default value um, for the vendor ID. Um, but to walk through and demonstrate what it actually does, let's, let's you know, talk through it. So let's say I want to create this sequence called the vendor ID sequence, and it's going to start with one. And I'm going to create that sequence. Now, to make it clear, um, all this code does is now that I've actually created the sequence, you know, it's over here. And you'll see here that it was created on this date by me. Uh, it has a minimum value of, of one. It has a max value of a very, very large number. Um, and so what this, um, you know, can do is if I go and actually select the next value of that sequence, or let's, let's actually select the current value. Um, now, if I try to run that by itself, you're going to get an error message. And this is where a very valuable tool called the dual table actually helps you out. Um, every select statement has to have a from in it. And so there's actually a built-in dummy table called the dual table that is just this kind of public table that if you actually go and search and look at that table, uh, it's a dummy table that has one column called dummy, and it has a value of x. Um, and when I want to, let's say I want to select the next value uh, in this sequence, um, just to allow it to syntactically work, we're allowed to uh, say, I want to go select the next value from the dual table. If that doesn't make any sense, don't worry about it. We'll get further along into the select statement. But basically, this is a way for me to go and look at what's the current value of that sequence. So let's go run this statement here. I'm going to say select the vendor ID sequence current value from dual. If I run it, Let's see here. We haven't defined this session yet. Uh, it's, oddly enough, this is a great this is a great example. Um, one to show you that sometimes you have to like make sure you read your error messages, and two to also know that you know um, even teachers are capable of mistakes. Uh, the mistake that I made here is is a simple one. Um, the vendor ID sequence currently has no current value because it just got created. But if I go in and say, give me the next value, what it will do is it goes, hey, I have no value. What is the next value? And it's actually going to go, and it's going to look up that value. And it's going to say the next value is 1. Uh, so I ran this statement here that says, you know, next value. So now I'm actually going to go change it to curve value. And if I run it now, it actually is going to say, oh, the current value is 1. So if I say, OK, well, give me the next value. What's the next value? Uh, It'll, so what's do, what it's doing here is it's not guessing what the next value is. It's actually going and calculating it and saying, all right, um, this is a sequence. It starts at 1. Uh, the current value is 1. Uh, it increments by 1. So it's going to go out and say, OK, well, uh, my current value is 1. It increments by 1, so the next value is 2. And then it's going to replace the current value with 2. So now if I go and select the current value of the sequence, it is 2. All right, what does all that mean? 
So it simply means that, okay, if I wanna go run an insert, let's say I wanna create this new vendor and call it Acme Company or whatever, um, and I wanna insert it. Now, I could go and have to look up, okay, what's the current value? Um, and then I could, you know, go add one to that. Um, I could also just go in and insert three. Um, but what's easier to do is just say, hey, I wanna insert for the value of vendor ID, I just wanna go insert the next value in the sequence. And so if I run this, it'll run just fine. Um, and it looks like vendor name has to be unique. Uh, so let's go this, let's, try, let's, let's go try to enter another one. Let's go, I'm gonna leave all the information about this vendor the same, but I'm just gonna call this um, uh, Territories. This is another favorite company of mine. And I'm gonna run that. And sure enough, it inserts just fine. Well, let's go quickly look at the data in the table. Um, so I could click on table over here and look at it, but an easier thing to do would just be go to select star from vendors. Let's go run it. And sure enough, you'll see that territories got inserted and it basically put the next value in there uh, using the sequence. And this is really, really helpful because now we don't have to know the specific value of the ID to put in. We'll just let the computer figure it out. Um, so if I do the same thing with invoices and I go create this invoice table here. So I ran and created this statement here. I'm gonna create a sequence called invoice ID sequence. It starts with 115. The reason this is actually starting at 115 is that when we do that massive refresh script, it actually inserts 114 invoices from one through 14, 114. So when we start creating new invoices going forward, we want them to start at 115. That's why we're starting at this number. Um, and again, if I go through and I try to insert data into um, the invoices table, um, if I were to do that, it would uh, insert with you know, the right invoice ID. Uh, but here's the thing. What if we don't wanna have to actually insert and say, go insert the next value? What if we just want to do something like let the table go look it up itself? Well, the way we do that is simply using a default. So we can actually put a default constraint and say, hey, we wanna default the value of this ID to whatever the next value in the sequence is. And so, um, so let's just try this out. Let's go down here and let's, uh, let's drop the vendors table. Um, and let's make sure that we drop it. All right, it's dropped, meaning it's gone. All right, oh, I think it's because, yeah, there was an invoice table there. All right, so. So let's try this. Let's actually create the vendors table, but instead of leaving it like this, we're actually gonna set the default value to be the vendor, uh, vendor ID sequence. So let's go and create the table. It created just fine. So now I'm gonna go insert uh, vendor. Uh, uh, so insert into vendors, we're gonna set the values. So I'm gonna just set uh, instead of specifying the actual value here, um, I'm not even going to say vendor, you know, next value. We're just going to say, hey, go set it to whatever the default is. Um, so we're just going to run this insert statement and let's go select from vendors. And sure enough, there it is. Now you'll notice it's five and that's because we didn't drop the sequence and recreate it. We actually, it's still storing four as the current value and now it's storing five as the current value. Um, the other thing we could do too is that we could actually not even specify, you know, entering a vendor ID. I could just say, hey, I want this new vendor name. I want to go enter a, a new vendor. And I'm going to set the vendor to, uh, again, Territoys. I'm going to go uh, insert that vendor. And sure enough, there it goes. It actually went and inserted. So what it, again, what it's doing is it's inserting this value, but the table requires a primary key. But the table also is designed to say, hey, if we, yeah, we have to have a primary key, it can't be null, but the default value, if nobody specifies that, it's gonna default it to the next value in the sequence. So let's just try a couple more here. Let's go and insert, um, let's just do this. Let's go vendor A, and let's just write a few. Vendor A, vendor B, vendor C, and let's just go run all of these as a script. It's gonna insert them. Let's go select from vendors. 
Sure enough, there they are. And they all have been automatically assigned a vendor ID based on the sequence. So sequences, super awesome when you use them as default values within your tables. Um, and it saves you the trouble of having to know what the ID uh, for that table is. Uh, quickly, what I want to jump to is this idea of the sequences, uh, I'm sorry, indexes. Um, so I'm going to drop these tables one time. And simply, uh, we will cover this in the, uh, the lecture about indexes. Um, but what's important to understand is that indexes are very useful when we want to add performance to our database. And sometimes there are certain columns that we will look at and say, hey, we're going to be searching on this column a lot. We're going to be sorting this column a lot. Or maybe this is a foreign key, and we're going to be joining this table to other tables. And so in that case, we would want to potentially put an index on that uh, column. Um, and so here's the thing about the syntax of indexes is that if you are putting an index on a table and out in the real world, like at a company and you're working at an IT workforce and, and you need to put an index on a table, this is actually where I would say doing and practicing the syntax of indexes is probably not as critical because it's probably not going to be done by you. It's probably going to be done by a, a DBA who's had 20, 30 years experience, and it's going to be a very big decision about whether or not you put an index on a table. So practicing the index is not as important for me. It's more important that you understand the concept of what an index is, and that's covered in the lecture prior to this. But um, just to walk through the syntax of putting an index on a table, once we create a table, simply to do uh, put an index on a table, you follow a very simple structure. We follow that same DDL that we're used to. So we use the create, the name of the thing we're creating. So instead of create table or create user, we're creating an index and the name of that thing we're creating. Uh, you'll see that they follow this uh, structure of um, you know, the name of the table, the name of the column, and uh, any other details about the index, and then we put IX at the end. You're not required to do this. This is just a best practice, so that if I look at this index, I can know, oh, this is an uh, index. Uh, it's an uppercase index on the vendor name column on the vendor's table. So if I run this, it creates the index just fine. Uh, same thing here. If I go and create, I can create a unique index on the vendor phone. Let's say we're searching on phone number a lot, and we want to have the index, uh, you know, speed up performance. So when we're searching by phone number, that we can find the phone numbers quicker. Again, this is what you would do here. You can actually put that index on here, and so you just run that command. Um, and so even me running through these, probably not as necessary uh, because you can just practice them on your own. But uh, if I wanted to drop an index, it's just like dropping a table or anything else. You just say drop the index and the name of the index you want to drop, and it would drop. So I have to create this index, and then it drops it. So the syntax is probably not as important for indexes. Uh, I think more the concept is going to be more important for you to understand. But I just want to show you briefly how you can go and create indexes using the syntax. So hopefully that was helpful. That kind of wraps up our design uh, practice. And kind of uh, indexes and sequence would be the kind of the last final step in your design of your database. So if you have questions, let us know. Hope that was helpful. And we'll see you in the next lesson.